I, I want to ask the audience something. Do you, do you like this TV program? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of like it myself, but did you know that this is the worst show on TV? <laughs> it is, really, according to one of the big arbiters of our culture, the hit show 30 Rock. This is your moment. Tonight, TGS will not be the worst thing on television. It'll be John Stossel. Who's with me? Yeah! Let's do it! The worst show. Now, I don't know who wrote that line. Probably some left-wing writer who lives in this neighborhood. They all do. But <laughs> there just seems to be something about those of us who advocate for liberty that sets some people off, makes people angry. Last week at the Communist Party Summit in Cuba, they voted to let people buy and sell property for the first time in 50 years. And last year they announced they'd lay off a million public sector workers. The Castro government is going to fire government workers. In America, even the so-called radical Paul Ryan budget plan doesn't fire anybody. He doesn't close any departments, and yet he's attacked as radical and extreme. And this is the worst show on television because I say government should be smaller? And Ron Paul? People don't just disagree with him. They say he's nuts. Not just liberals. Dick Morris said, I think he's horrific. Horrific? Morris says the congressman's horrific because he wants to end the war on terror and the war on drugs. Why is that horrific? Yeah. I you want to end those things. I want to end the war on drugs. I'm skeptical about the size of the war on terror. Am I horrific? I'll have to ask Dick about that the next time I see him in one of those green rooms out there. But there's all this anger about libertarian arguments, and it kind of creeps me out. But we do have real differences, so maybe that's natural. My wife says, why can't we have bipartisanship? You know, why can't we just be like this? But Ron Paul says this. It's the bipartisanship of the welfare system, the warfare system, the monetary system, the challenge to our civil liberties. It all goes through with support from both parties. And I believe that we've had way too much bipartisanship for about 60 years. It is this bipartisanship that got us $14 trillion into debt. Uh, so, well, you know, I don't think we should have so much of that. But Democrats and Republicans met in back rooms. They made deals. And then they held press conferences and patted themselves on the back and said, we compromised. Aren't we doing a great job? And government grew. The great thing about Ron Paul is that he's never been part of those backroom deals. When it came to liberty, he would not... Compromise. Ron Paul has done more than just about anyone to preserve our freedom, and we owe him gratitude for that. And today, finally, more people like you are listening, and that's a good thing. That's our show for tonight. I'm John Stossel. Thanks for watching. Show conversation and get ticket information at John Stop. And the third still exists today. In the booze came straight up through the trap door and into the bar. The Elite 21 Club in New York City has its own unique defenses against the law. If a raid is imminent, the doorman alerts the bartender with a secret buzzer. That's the signal to flush the booze. In addition to collapsible shells, the 21 Club has secret passages and fake walls. In the basement, this brick wall is actually a door. It only unlocks when a long metal key is inserted into a tiny crack, giving way to the club's liquor vault. During Prohibition,